Hello fellow audio nerds, I'm Steph and this is Major Hi-Fi. On this week's episode of What's the Deal With, we're going to be taking a closer look at Soundstage. Now to me, Soundstage is one of the most difficult characteristics of an audiophile device to talk about. Um, I think a big reason for that is that it's not a measurable spec. It's, it's more so a psychoacoustic phenomenon that we experience. You know, our, our brains are a huge part of our hearing, and I think that, uh, you know, from an evolutionary perspective, the brain wants to be able to place things in space. So I think that's maybe one reason both why, sound, why we experience soundstage in the first place, but also why we like it so much, um, why it's really important when we're talking about headphones. So let's get into it. What's the deal with soundstage? When we audiophiles are talking about the soundstage of a headphone, what we're really talking about is the headphone's ability to recreate three-dimensional space, height, width, depth. And in terms of the actual language and just sort of the overall concepts, I have one recommendation for you. Um, there's this book called The Art of Mixing uh, by David Gibson. and this is a really great book to just sort of get a baseline understanding of soundstage. You know, I'm going to be getting into a little bit here and a lot of the ideas that I have sort of echo what uh, Mr. Gibson here is talking about. But the book is really great because there are tons of these like visualizations um, throughout the book that really can sort of show you like what, uh, <laughs> what, what the concepts are that he's actually talking about. So. That's one recommendation for you if you want to dig a little bit further and get some additional knowledge on this stuff other than what I have to say in this shortish video. So let's start with the first dimension, which is height. Okay, now height, um, in a very general sense, things with a lot of high frequency information, we tend to perceive to be higher in space, up above, beyond your head. Um, and things with a lot of low frequency information tend to feel lower down on your body, so down by your abdomen or your gut, for example. Therefore, when you're wearing a pair of headphones or a pair of earphones, you can expect to hear a kick drum down by your pelvis. You can expect to hear hi-hat and cymbals up by the top of your head. And I tried looking into possible explanations for this, and what I found was that a lot of the potential information that's out there isn't completely accepted by everyone. Um, so I guess we can sort of say that nobody knows why this is happening, but that's just the case. But I guess for those of you who are feeling sort of skeptical or who haven't really so much experienced this sensation for yourself, I encourage you right now, pause the video, go to your sound system, your headphones, whatever, and really listen to where in the height spectrum you're hearing cymbals. Where are you hearing the bass guitar? Um, and I know for sure that you will find that you have this sort of top to bottom sense of, sense of space sense of um, height, if you will. <laughs> now, different headphones relay the sense of height differently. Um, and to me, it's really so related to the sense of high frequency and low frequency extension. So if you have a pair of headphones, for example, that has great high frequency extension, but not so much low frequency extension, what you might find is that the sense of height goes way beyond your head. It sort of feels very expansive up there, but you feel sort of that the low frequencies kind of stop here, um, stop lower on your body. And, um, you know, the same goes for if the scenario was flipped or, you know, if there's a lot of high frequency extension and low frequency extension, you have this extremely expansive sense of height. Um, but there's, it's also sort of different too, because I think that you know, sometimes the sense of height can feel very, very precise. Um, you know, for example, you hear one instrument that feels like it's exactly coming from right here, or exactly over here, you know, um, in, in that sense of height. And I think the headphones and earphones I find that do this the best tend to have a very clear separation in each band of the frequency response in the highs and the lows. So the high highs have really great separation from the middle highs and the lower highs. Same thing with the 
low frequencies, you know, the sub energy feels very separate from uh, the rest of the low frequency region. So um, if you have a good separation in the actual frequency, frequency response of the thing, uh, chances are you're probably going to have a pretty precise sense of height. On to width. Now you might think that the sensation of width is the same for all earphones and headphones because by virtue of the shape of your head, uh, you know, those speakers are equidistant from your ears regardless of what headphones you use, you know, they're going to be right here. There's only so much space. Uh, there's only so much width. But that's actually not quite true as you probably expect by the fact that you're watching the soundstage video. In a very general sense, um, a big piece of the placement of instruments in, you know, the stereo field, the left and right, uh, comes during the, the mix down process of the songs. You know, the mix engineer has control of pan pots and they can say, okay, let's put the instrument out both speakers equally. In that case, your brain will sort of fill in the gaps and actually you'll perceive that as coming straight from the middle. Or the mix engineer might say, I want this to come out only on the left or only on the right. But, uh, you know, also mixed into that, you can actually, you know, the mix engineers can choose to do something that's sort of an asymmetrical mixture of the two. So I want this to be, you know, 70% coming out the left and 30% coming out the right. But back in the day when two channel, you know, having stereo um, music was still very new, you could only choose left, right, or center. You didn't really have that option of doing this asymmetrical thing. Uh, and because of that, if you listen to old records, you know, listen to some older Beatles records that are in stereo, and you'll be like, wow, the drums are coming out only one side and the bass is only coming out another side. You know, what a strange kind of choice they made. But in reality, they were sort of just working with the limitations of the gear at that time. But obviously today, um, we don't really have that problem anymore, or that limitation anymore. Um, you can really choose where the instruments will be coming from. But in headphones, um, the sense of width can really sort of become more or less expansive depending on certain characteristics of the actual piece of hardware of the headphone. You know, even just considering a closed back set of cans or uh, an open back set of cans, with an open back, the sound is literally extending from, you know, it's being thrown out wider than your head, and you will perceive that as a greater sense of width. But a couple other characteristics I find really common for having a very kind of a wide sound stage is, um, you know, a quick transient response. I also find that things that are, you know, headphones that are brighter tend to sound a little bit wider to me as well. And especially at the high-end level of headphones, the feelings of width that you experience, I think, are really aesthetic choices that manufacturers are making. Because while an expansive sense of width can create the sense of realism and, uh, and just, I don't know, overall spaciousness, it can also create a lack of intimacy, and it can also create uh, this feeling that, you know, the two speakers are too separate from each other. There's not enough of a binding kind of thing holding it all together. So I think that when it's done really well, it makes it feel super realistic and good. And when it's not done well, it can make the kind of speakers feel like separate units entirely. Lastly, depth. Now, the sense of depth to me is actually the most interesting piece of the soundstage. Um, and I think that's just like a weird sort of guilty pleasure of mine that when a headphone creates a really aesthetically pleasing, accurate, sense of depth, it really makes me fall in love with that product, I have to admit. Um, but depth is complicated, you know, there are actually a lot of different ways that, from the mixing perspective, that a, an engineer can do to create a sense of depth. One would simply be just turning an instrument up or down. If it's quieter in the mix, it will feel like it's a little bit further back. Um, and likewise, if something is louder in the mix, it will feel like it's a step closer to you. Um, but there are other ways to do it too, using time-based effects like reverbs, delays, using mics can give things a sense of 
space, a sense of depth further away from you. Um, and again, another sort of thing that you can do is using frequency filters. So if you sort of cut all of the high end out of a out of an instrument, sometimes it will feel like it's sort of taken a step backward. But one way I really like to think about depth is imagine a, a picture of a mountain range, okay? So you've got the mountains that are really close to you and as, you know, layers of mountains sort of go into the background and you finally reach the horizon, um, those sort of mountains way in the back look very different from those things that are way in the front. In front, you've got a lot of contrast, you've got a lot of detail, you can see the texture of the rocks or the trees on the mountaintops, and as the mountains go back in space, you start to lose a little bit of that definition. The colors start to become a little bit less saturated, uh, and you are sort of, you can see what's back there, but it's still very, it's, it's a little bit cloudier, hazier. And I think sort of, I think of soundstage depth in the same sort of way where when you have something that's right up close and in, in center and right in your face, um, you know, you can really sort of hear all the texture um, in that. For example, think of a vocal. You can hear the vocal cords, you can hear the breath of the singer, you can hear any raspiness that comes out of that voice versus, you know, a background gang vocal, for example, which sits further back in space and you can't even really necessarily, you might not even hear what the vocals are saying, but you hear that it's a voice, you can still hear the timbre, but it's just a little bit less detailed and it's, and it's a little bit more um, deep. You feel it as being further away. So that to me is one of the most interesting things. Now, there are, again, a few characteristics that many headphones that have a good sense of depth oftentimes have. One of those things is a quick transient response. Another one of those things is um, being open back. And regardless of the headphones that you're using, I do find that using a dedicated DAC or, you know, like, the, basically the better your DAC gets, the more the soundstage improves from from my perspective. And maybe that has something to do with transient response, I'm not really sure. But uh, I do find that that phenomenon happens pretty often when I'm experiencing a DAC. And it seems like some headphone companies really accentuate the sense of depth. Uh, companies like Odyssey, I, uh, I remember the first time I heard an Odyssey headphone and it blew me away how the sense of depth uh, felt, it just felt unreal. I'd never heard anything quite like it before. And likewise, some headphone companies will more so take depth and then play with it a little bit. You know, not make it just so far away, but really play with the sense of intimacy you can get um, and the sense of far awayness. And that's something that I found with a lot of final audio stuff. Uh, D8000 um, has such a beautiful kind of sense of intimacy while maintaining this this sense of depth sometimes. I don't know how they do it, but it's really well done. And other headphones really just lack depth, and I don't know how to, uh, I don't know how to, you know, make that better. I don't know, even necessarily know why it's not as good, but, you know, you, it's just something that you perceive, something that you feel, um, when you feel like something really has a three-dimensional, um, more precise leveling between the things that are close to you and the things that are far away from you. Regardless, just like with, depth creates a sense of realism and it really makes the experience of listening to music just so much more experiential, for lack of better words. Overall, soundstage is really an important characteristic and although it's not measurable, um, you know, listening for these individual pieces of soundstage can sort of help you make a determination on what the soundstage is doing for the music. You know, when it's done really well, it creates a sense of realism and a sense of just uh, three-dimensionality that when it's not there, you really miss it. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like these, be sure to subscribe. And if you're interested in learning more about this stuff, be sure to check out The Art of Mixing by David Gibson. All right, everybody. Thanks, and I'll see you next week. Peace.